Bizarre Brain Comics. Hello, and welcome to Bizarre Brain Comics. I am Gary, your host. <clears throat> okay, this time I want to take a look at this book right here. This is a paperback. Paperback book. And it is reprinting the first adventure from The World's Greatest Superheroes Present Superman comic strip. Newspaper comic strip. Yeah. <clears throat> and this book is from 1982. And it is written by Martin Pascal. Martin Pasco, and uh, penciled by George Tuska, and inks by Vince Coletta. Boy, we see an awful lot of stuff by Vinnie Coletta, because he sure was pro prolific. <clears throat> now this, now this strip, uh, this is a newspaper strip, and it was syndicated. A syndicated newspaper strip featuring the DC characters pri uh, comprising primarily the Justice League of America slash the Super Friends. And it ran from 1978 to 1985. And it was syndicated by the Chicago Tribune New York News Syndicate. This is now it ran for for what about nearly seven years and that's a, a pretty good run for an adventure strip especially at that time uh, because adventure strips were on the way out and it and it's was difficult for a new strip to get a foothold uh, and it probably wouldn't have had it not already uh, featured established characters and remember at this this at this time um, the super friends was was fairly popular on television the animated show and this was right at the time of the the height of the popularity of of uh, the Superman movies. Because during this run was uh, uh, Superman one and two, and yeah, coming up to uh, Superman three, where the popularity fell off because it wasn't it, that movie wasn't nearly so good. Okay. And, and it featured the work of many of the DC uh, creators, starting with Martin Pasco, followed by many other writers. I'm not even going to try to list them all. But it only had really uh, two teams on the art. It was George, George Tusca and Vince Coletta, and Jose Delbo and Sal Trapini. And I guess they had a couple of fill-ins here and there. But those were the primarily the primary uh, people doing the art chores. Oops. <clears throat> okay. okay. And the cast of characters changed as time passed, uh, depending on the needs of the story, but always maintained Superman at the core, because remember, his, this was at the height of, of his popularity uh, in the later part of the century. Okay, and I uh, wanted to talk okay, a little bit about the, the artist, penciler, George Tuska. <clears throat> um, he was from uh, uh, 1916 to 2009, so he was getting pretty long in the tooth by the time he passed away. He was in his 90s, almost as old as my old man. Um, he was an American artist and worked on stuff in the 40s, uh, such as the, the Captain Marvel, the Shazam version, of course and uh, crime comics, but he's probably best known for his uh, 1960s run on the uh, Marvel's Iron Man, and as well as for his, his run on, on, this, uh, on this strip. And as a youth, he studied at the National Academy of Design, and he was strongly influenced by the popular illustrators at the time, and of course, um, the usual comic strip artists Hal Foster, and 
Now I'm suddenly drawing a blank on the other one. Um, uh, Alex Raymond, because they were the real big ones, and they influenced everybody at that time. And he, he uh, started in the art field uh, designing women's costume jewelry. As uh, a couple others that we've talked about it started doing that too. But he got started in the comics at the Eisner Iger shop. And uh, as Will Eisner and uh, I've forgotten Iger's first name. <clears throat> they, uh, and they worked packaging uh, comic stories for publishers. So that the publisher didn't have to uh, hire the artists directly and come up with the characters and stuff. And they're, they're often uh, one-off or, or a series uh, based on a character that they, that they created um, and then uh, kept usually kept exclusively for a, a particular publisher, you know, like Blackhawk. Yeah, because Blackhawk started at the, at the Eisner Iger shop for a specific publisher. Now, uh, th as I said, this is the reprinting of the first adventure from the strip. And I don't know if they've ever reprinted any of the other adventures. This is the only one I've ever seen. And, and if they haven't, I, I wish they would. Uh, it would be... Because I'm one who would definitely want to read it. Now the 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 writing, I mean, it flowed. It's a typical kind of Justice League type story, but some of the 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 rationale and and some of the science is is, is a little off and and not the best. But it's a it's still a fun read. But even at that time, they should have been been writing, uh, I think, better stories. It's almost like he was, almost like Pasco was was phoning it in, but the artwork was was, was fine. Even uh, now, Vince Coletta's inks has had a tendency to really stiffen, and it does here too, stiffen uh, the the work of of the penciler. But it's uh, not too too badly. It, his uh, Tuska's work does show through. And there are even moments when his when Coletta's inks um, really assist, I think. And the story just starts right off, kind of with a bang, uh, sp spotting uh, a uh, a nuclear missile, which doesn't look anything like a nuclear missile. Uh, it looks like some kind of alien spaceship um, that has been launched by by somebody at Metropolis <laughs> and this was primarily just to get the these heroes uh, distracted and into something and it's Superman and and Flash who deal, and here's where it gets some of the silly stuff and of course this is carried over from the, the comics and this would have been largely from the uh, kind of stuff that they would have done in the uh, Silver Age and or early Bronze Age like just Picking up a building. Well, of course, if you try to pick up a building like that, it would have just collapsed, uh, so that the missile doesn't hit it. And this is where some of the ignorance. Of course, people wouldn't have known that uh, um, it wouldn't be the missile coming in. It would be the warhead coming in, and it would doesn't explode on impact, but it explodes way up in the atmosphere, and the uh, and the the shock wave does the damage most of the damage and I only know that because I used to work with nuclear weapons and it's uh, while Superman is is redirecting the missile why didn't he just do like he did in movies and make it go up out of the atmosphere and explode but this is for some more dramatic effect so that the 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 heroes could work together as a team um, using Superman's cape uh, and stretching it across a, an area uh, of the ocean, a bay or something like that. Because this is, remember, this is pre-crisis and Superman's costume at this time was made from his baby blankets. So it's Kryptonian material. 
and is indestructible and virtually infinitely stretchable. Convenient, isn't it? Catches the missile in there and, and closes it so that it goes off and with no harm done. Because it just causes escape to balloon out. Right? And it's on and on. And they, they find a, a tape that was inside the missile. I don't know how it would have been indestructible and why that the radiation wouldn't have uh, wiped the, the, the tape clean <laughs> from the radiation, you know, the magnetic stuff. Anyway, so they're on the their satellite, Justice League satellite, in stationary orbit, 22,300 miles in orbit. And uh, to view the tape, it's discover that it's from... Uh, it's from the villain Vandal Savage. There's Aquaman and Wonder Woman. And it gives brief backgrounds on them. Anyway, Vandal Savage is the, is the villain. Now, Van, uh, uh, somewhere in here, it gives um, a brief background on Vandal Savage, who was uh, uh, an immortal. He started out as a, as a caveman, uh, exposed to some radiation, weird radiation from a... Uh, from a crashed meteor, uh, making him very intelligent and very uh, um, long-lived. But he has discovered that he is getting older. He is indeed aging; just has been aging very slowly. And he got into over the over the millennia of his life, because he's many thousands of years old. And over the millennia of his life, uh, he got became very knowledgeable in science and stuff and magic sorcery and so he often combines the two here it shows his his backstory and uh, anyway he's going to do something he's got some kind of gizmo that's going to causes havoc at different different locations in the world and this was common for um, Justice League stories of uh, there would be some kind of menace and something would be in, in different parts and the the Justice League would have to break up into teams to go deal with, with each each um, menace and then band together for to uh, at the end to combine uh, uh, fight the main villain. Now this is where one little bit where Vince Coletta's inks actually come in because with his um, history on uh, romance comics and I've said many times his best work is on romance comics that's just what his style works best for the way he just draws the the very lovely ladies and that shows through here on his inking of Wonder Woman and they uh, oh there's something melting the I the ice caps and there's a gizmo there and then Flash has, has to have a threat. A giant super tornado hitting New York, and Wonder Woman goes to deal with that. And of course, she's captured, and Flash is captured. And then another uh, super menace in uh, in Egypt, and uh, Superman goes to deal with that with a giant sandstorm going to cause all kinds of havoc. And it turns out that there's some kryptonite there, and that that incapacitates him and that's how they have each have to ov overcome their particular uh threats and meanwhile aquaman stayed aboard the the their space station in orbit to monitor monitor things when everyone is trapped he says i've got to go help out go help him it's when he is captured at that moment by uh um vandal savage himself and he and What's kind of unusual is that Aquaman is having feelings of inadequacy because it's well, it's outside of the water, doesn't deal with fish. But I'm I'm pretty much useless, and they're kind of forgetting that Aquaman is one of the most powerful uh, heroes uh, in the Justice League. As as far as sheer strength is concerned, he is right behind Wonder Woman, and Wonder Woman is right behind Superman, so he is extremely powerful in his own right. But he is captured and having f feelings of in inadequacy. Uh, the, the heroes um, free themselves from their respective threats. Then they discover Aquaman has been captured. And they ha they figure out somehow where that Vandal Savage is also on a, on a stationary satellite uh, that is cloaked. And 
meanwhile well they they come there and uh, he's threatening Vandal Savage is threatening the life of Aquaman and Aquaman manages to get spilled with some water and regains his strength and then he manages to take out uh, take out Aquaman I mean correction uh, Vandal Savage while he is nearly dealing with uh, that stuff it's it's a fun read of course they win in the end Vandal Savage is taken down and goes to prison or whatever he does and that is it for the first adventure no not I remember this strip. I read, used to read it when it was in the in the newspapers, uh, just not regularly, just occasionally, and, and I enjoyed it. That's why I'd like I'd like to see the others reprinted if they haven't been, and if they have been, I want to find them. Um, but I think since they're, DC has a terrible, from what I understand, a terrible reprint program, and that's something that they really should reprint. I'm surprised that it hasn't been in a trade paperback uh, or a series of trade paperbacks because it would be uh, uh, seven years. I could probably uh, do three volumes, probably, uh, reprinting these stories. And it's a fun read. Uh, if you if you can find it, you can often find it in, in uh, secondhand bookstores uh, for next to nothing or just like five or six bucks if if they're aware that it's something that's a little more valuable um and if you happen to to like the dc characters well that's that's a good deal uh it's some f fun that you might not have uh experienced before <laughs> and of course it's it's neat just because it's a it's a comic strip instead of a comic book so that's what i've got for this time for world's greatest superheroes present superman please like share subscribe and leave a comment if you do you do you uh, uh remember this this comic strip well oh, oh, tell me about it uh have you seen other uh reprints from this strip that i am unaware of let me know i would like to like to uh try to find one Remember, comics are art.